All right, what's going on, guys? My name is Steve from the Checkpoint, and wow, look at these explosions in the background. Look at all this crazy chaos that's going on behind the screen here. Uh, welcome to Sky Rogue. This is a game made by Fractal Fizz, I believe they are called. I hope I'm getting that right. Otherwise, I've just given them a really awesome developer name, which they should totally take up. Uh, but I probably got that right. So, as you can see, this is a flying simulation game as suggested by the title and the artwork and everything like that and the little video you've seen in the background and uh, today we're going to be giving it a go uh, we are using the xbox one controller which is hooked up to my pc right now there is options to use the keyboard and mouse but for now i'm going to use the xbox one controller because i'm all the more familiar with it and let's get straight into it so as you can see we have multiple uh, styles of gameplay options here we have play co-op split screen free fly options and quit so let's look in the options for the starters as you can see we've got uh, resolutions here we can change it up all the way up to 1366 by 768 but i'm going to be playing on uh, 1280 by 720 for now full screen v-sync music lock mouse invert x invert y auto target bomb camera and mods so let's have a look at the controls while we're here and uh, these are the basic controls of the game. As you can see, uh, it's all fully compatible with the Xbox One controller for Windows. Uh, so if you prefer playing with controller or prefer playing with keyboard and mouse, then you can do just that. So let's jump straight back into the options menu here and back into the main screen. So today we're going to be going through each one of these uh, game modes. So we're going to be starting with play. We're not going to be doing co-op co and, uh, co and split screen, sorry, uh, right now because I have no friends. So uh, let's jump straight into play and see what we can do. So I've played a good five or ten so minutes of this and uh, basically you haven't missed much. All I had to do was do a quick little tutorial mission uh, to destroy uh, this command center over here. So I'm going to be showing you a bit of, uh, a bit of what it looks like. Uh, before we begin. So first of all, this is my plane. As you can see, it's the basic one you get at the start. I haven't upgraded it or anything like that. But it's got full uh, movability. You can also increase the throttle with the right and left triggers. I'm going to be going off the uh, controller uh, controls here. So if I'm, you know, saying things which are wrong for uh, the keyboard and mouse, then I'm very sorry, but I'm using the controller right now. So uh, X is to shoot. And uh, with these specific weapons, the micro uh, rockets, which I'm using right now, uh, then you c uh, it kind of locks on to the target before you can do anything, before you can uh, fire. You can fire uh, in free mode if you want, but they don't go very far. So obviously the target has to be within this little crosshair, this radius, this circular white radius, which you see on the screen. Excuse me. And... Uh, Obviously, this isn't the only weapon I have so far. I also have the RKT. I'm going to call it Wrecked for now, because that's what it says. And uh, I'll show you what this one does. But yeah, increase the throttle. Uh, obviously, if you want to slow down, it's the left trigger. Right trigger is to speed up. Left trigger is to slow down. X to fire. There's a couple of rockets for the command center there. And it says the mission is complete. So we can head back up to the base. And uh, there's a problem here. I'm not sure if it's a glitch with the game, but once you destroyed the command center, it says you can move back up to the uh, the carrier up here, which I presume this is. It's kind of like the heli carrier from the Avengers, but you can head back up here to complete the mission, but also you can fire some flares. I'll try to get a good angle. Uh, I'm moving the camera with the right stick for now, but as you can see there, my flare went, and that essentially just distracts enemies and uh, stops you from getting uh, too uh, hit up by rounds and bullets and whatnot from enemy aircraft. And uh, yeah, let's slow down and see if we can land on this uh, on this carrier. As you can see, the game runs very well. Um, oh, okay, that wasn't as smooth as landing as I would, I was hoping it to be. I'm, I'm not sure how you'd actually slow down. I'm, I think the carrier is actually yeah, the carrier seems to have repaired itself. So we're gonna have to destroy the. I don't even know where I am. So we're gonna have to destroy the carrier before we can do anything. So let's just go in hot here, fire a couple of missiles, see if we can get... All right, we missed everyone there. There we go, we, we managed to get one in. Uh, I believe we can also swap with the D-pad. Yep, up and down. All right, so it's up for the micro-rockets and right for the RKTs, or the wrecks. So let's head back over here and see if we can destroy it. And then hopefully we'll be able to land. I haven't actually managed to successfully do it yet. So we can fire... Uh, a massive amounts 
of rounds here. Uh, land at the carrier after destroying the command center to proceed to the next island. You can also repair and rearm. Um, I'm having trouble actually uh, managing to land with this. I've tried it a couple of times in uh, previous playthroughs, but it's very difficult, I've noticed. I'm not sure if there's actually a uh, control for this. You can't check the controls. This is one thing I noticed in the pause menu, which is very sparse to say the least. You can't access the options, you can't leave, well you can go back to the main menu, but you can't um, check your options and your controls and whatnot, which is very annoying to say the least, because what if you wanted to change something midway through? What if it wasn't, wasn't running as well, but you didn't want to lose your mission progress? It seems a bit... It seems a bit uh, ill-informed not to have the pause menu options there. Now, I want to land, but I'm not sure how to best go about it. Maybe we need to get a better run-up in. I feel that's what I need to do. So let's rotate around this way. Now, if we head around this way and then hopefully just turn around over here and maybe now this isn't a very good line we've got going into to this landing zone I feel like this is going to be another crash maybe oh we did it okay excellent so as you can see this game is very very good looking this is one of my favorite art styles uh, in general it's just a voxelized uh, simplistic uh, minimalistic um, oh god, enemy lock. We want to fire a flare, if we can. Uh, I can't actually move my... I believe my control is disconnected. Good god. Um, I can't regain any of my controls. Hopefully I don't crash. I'm just going in a straight line for now. Hopefully this doesn't end up too badly. But uh, it seems my, my Xbox controller has kind of killed itself. So let's try playing with uh, keyboard and mouse. Let's see how we do. Oh no! The controller's back alive. No, no, it's not. This is very bad. We want to regain control before we hit the ground. I think... I, oh, God. All right, we're going to have to pull up. Oh, the save. Right, so we're going to have to be playing with keyboard and mouse for now. And let's just see what we can do. I'm not sure how to attack or do anything, really. Uh, right, okay. I can fire a flare, which is good. How do I... Okay. I, I would much much rather be playing this with uh, my Xbox controller now, so I'm going to unplug it and uh, carefully replug it back in. So hopefully this isn't too bad. Why don't we try free, free flight mode while we're here, actually? So let's head out of this uh, menu because I've basically shown you the uh, general premise of those missions. You know, you get a target, you destroy it and whatnot. So let's move down to free flight mode. I believe this is a procedurally generated section of the game, so let's have a look. Uh, we have the rogue medium fighter, which we were just using. Uh, what else do we have? It seems like this is the only one, and it seems like the UI has disappeared altogether, which is great. I don't know why it did that, but it seems that's a problem with the game. So let's just uh, let's just back out of that. Let me just pause and hit tab. Um, that seems like an issue for the developers to fix. Uh, okay, whatever. We'll just go with this. Give me that. Alright, so this is free flight mode. I'm not sure what this completely entails of yet, but I'm sure we'll see. It looks kind of like a free roam experience. Um, so let's see what we can do. Let's just have a fly around and talk about this game in general. So this game is absolutely gorgeous. As I said, this is one of my favorite... Uh, one of my favorite art styles in general for video games. It's just... So simplistic and so polygonal. It's kind of escapism in a way. I mean, that you. Oh, what is this? You know, it's in so many games that um, they try to be as realistic and gritty as possible, but this is an example of a game that doesn't take itself too seriously and remains true to its roots, which are like games such as Pilot Wings and uh, Star Fox. I'm not sure what these are. Let's destroy them. Uh, Pilot Wings and Star Fox. Which is, you know, these are obviously hugely inspired by games like that flight simulation games of the past but i also feel like a bit of minecraft in here the way you can explore massive planes of land with no uh, limitations and uh yeah we're just gonna fly for a bit so i believe the voxelized art style and the simplicity of it all works very well uh i mean if this was you know a gritty realistic uh textured high shadowed anti-aliased you know beautiful 
Battlefield 4 style game, I feel like some of the wonder and some of the excitement from this game would be would be gone. Because I'm going to try landing the hangar over here because this is just an example of a pretty world. And that's what you need the most when you're in a game that relies so much on exploration. So just a flight simulator game. Exploration of a beautiful world, of a pretty world, is just necessary because what's the point in exploring if it looks like utter, you know, awfulness? Uh, can I land here or whatever? I don't know. Let's just see if you can actually land in general. I don't believe you can. No, you can't. I went in very slowly there and it just destroys you. But as you can see, the music seems to have stopped, which is another glitch. Obviously, this game uh, is in early access, so it's not uh, completely without bugs, as we've uh, noticed before. So let's have another little fly around. I believe this is just kind of like a testing ground area, just to show you the mechanics of the game. I actually want to see how far we can go before it like causes us to stop. Let's just keep flying. Upwards, upwards, upwards. So I, I'm going to talk about what my main... Uh, okay, that's the, the flight limit there. So my main critique of this game would be... Let's see, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty good, okay? It's a pretty solid product overall so far because it is an early access. I think the game needs to aid the player a bit more. I mean, obviously, if I pause, uh, we can't access anything here can't access any of the options, anything like that, so that's a major problem that needs sorting. Uh, also, I believe that there needs to be more of a balance between uh, the keyboard and mouse and Xbox One controller, or Xbox 360 controller uh, controls. Because right now I'm using the Xbox uh, One controller, I'm flying with relative ease, I mean obviously I'm not the best flyer in the world, but I'm flying with relative ease. You know, all the controls are as you'd expect them to be in a flight simulator game. Uh, what is this? Uh, so, you know, that is, that's very good in that respect. But also, in another respect, is the fact that... Let me destroy this, because global warming is a serious problem, and these power plants deserve to be destroyed. Um, another major problem would be the fact that... Wait, what's I talking about? I was talking about the keyboard and mouse controls. The keyboard and mouse controls, if I swap over to them right now, uh, they are very... Very different, in my opinion. I mean, WS, you know, that's fast and slow, essentially. You know, throttle, brake, W and, and S there. But E and D control the... Oh, no, just E does. E looks behind you. Uh, there's no real way to control the camera, uh, it doesn't seem, uh, other than E. I mean, if I look around with my mouse, that just fires things. But the button for fire is on the mouse, which requires you to take your fingers away from the D-pad. So, I'm not sure how it expects me to do it at the same time. And I mean, it's literally impossible for me to press throttle, move to the right, and shoot at the same time. It's literally impossible. While on the Xbox One, uh, Xbox One controller, I could do it all at once. I can fire, I can move around, I can, you know, it's... It's just not accessible for keyboard and mouse users, and if you're going to launch a game on Steam, then that's pretty important, because the relative majority of players on Steam are going to use keyboard and mouse. So I feel like the game needs to recognize that more, and use it to make an all-round more polished control scheme for keyboard and mouse users, because right now, what they've got pales in comparison to the uh, Xbox controllers. Uh, control the scheme. But aside from that, the game runs extremely well. I haven't noticed too many lag spikes, as I say that. I just encountered a couple of major ones right there. And I believe this is all procedurally generated, so let's just fly a straight forward for a while just to see if it is. And, uh, yeah. Let's see how far we can go. So, yeah, that's, you know, the art style is great. The visuals are just amazing. It's just a really, I mean, it could use a couple more structures down there, perhaps a bit more detail. And uh, maybe the, I believe the water is just a static image right now. I'm not sure if it's actually moving. It doesn't seem to be. It just seems to be one frozen image. So that could use a bit of a, bit more of a flowing uh, animation, if you'll pardon the pun. And the clouds as well. Uh, they're a bit, 
I feel like they could use a bit more texture. I mean, obviously, this is a voxel-based game. It's a polygonal-based game. So it's going to require a bit more uh, of a simplistic touch. But, you know, I feel like these clouds could use a bit of work. Because there's... One of the things about clouds in games is that I feel like when we look up at the sky in a video game, it's supposed to provide you with a sense of, like, wonder and vastness. But these clouds just seem like another object. They don't seem... I don't know. There's something about them that bugs me. But aside from that, there's some really neat visual effects. The trails behind you. You know, the wind zooming past your screen. Stuff like that. Is really, really cool. But... I feel like the game doesn't make the most of it. I mean, obviously it does it in a sense that it's extremely simplistic and reminiscent of games like Star Fox, but I feel like it could bring something new to the table. Like perhaps a couple of structures, uh, little landing zones you can land on and then explore the world around it, and uh, stuff like that. I'm also not sure what to do with these plants. I'm sure it'll explain more in the little story mode that we've uh, encountered this there. But also the landing mechanism is very very uh iffy to say the least um let's go land back on the carrier right now and see if we what's that over there Actually, oh no, it's some water uh, um, let's go land back on the carrier over here and see uh see if we can do anything about that because i, w I really want to show you the landing mechanism again because um, it's just it's just shoddy it seems i mean obviously if you want to stop you slow down but as you'll see in a second the slightest touch can kind of nudge the plane downwards. And if you go too slowly, you'll actually uh, stall, I believe. But I don't know. Perhaps I'm just going too in, uh, in too fast and I'm very clumsy and stuff like that. Also, the top left, if you can see these two icons with the numbers, the number zero next to them on each side. Um, I haven't had any of that explained to me. A lot of the UI I haven't had explained to me. And that's extremely, you know, negative for ease of access use. I mean, it's not helping accessibility, which some players may need because flight simulation games like this are not the most popular genre right now. Um, oh god. As you can see, the carry is just at stall height, so if I slow down too much, then it's gonna dive bomb me. Alright, there we go. But yeah, the landing mechanism is a bit iffy. The accessibility and ease of access is also a bit iffy. But the game itself is really, really solid. And it's just, it's an example of how, uh, let me just quit out here, of how a game can do flight simulation in a simplistic manner without, you know, without becoming over too complicated. Uh, apparently past day three, it gets very, very difficult. So I'm, I'm not quite sure how that'll work. So let's go to day two. But yeah, this, overall, this game is extremely solid. And the art style works very well. The soundtrack is very fitting of the retro style it was going for. And uh, let's see what we can do. I'll show you some more enemy combat here. So, overall, this game is very solid for a for an early access title. Obviously, it's in I believe it's in alpha. I'm running the what version of this game am I running? I'm not I'm not entirely sure. I might not even be running the um, original version of the game. So, let's just see what we can do here. Like, none of these enemies have been explained to me. Like, I guess it gives more to, like... Okay, I want to fire a flare there. It gives more to, like, uh, let the player, like, find their own feet and find their own way. But... Okay. But aside from that, it really doesn't hold your hand. It's very... It's really quite ruthless, and if it does get difficult in day, was it three they said it would be? If it does get difficult in day three, then God help me, because I'm struggling with day one right now. So I feel like it throws you right in there, there's a very steep learning curve, uh, especially when you've got to consider flying and stuff like that, and different uh, things like that. I feel like it, it could hold your hand a, a, a lot more, in all honesty. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing right now. But, yeah, this has been Skyrug. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave it a like. Uh, make sure you pick up this game. It's on the Steam Early Access Store right now. Uh, go check out the developer's website, the Twitter account. All the info will be in the description. 
And as always, this has been Steve from The Checkpoint, and I will talk to you soon.